For those of you that are joining us by live stream, God bless you today. Thank you for joining us at AGCI, where faith, I mean, grace speaks. And um, we just continue to walk in the abundant grace of God because you know what? When God favors you, when God favors you, nobody can stop you. Amen? Today, I, I want to I just get into something really quick. I, I'm going into it because of some of the, the things that I've been through over the last couple of months. And I'm um, talking to people from different areas and different things like that. I'm finding out that uh, some people are stuck. Some people are asking God to remove hurdles and roadblocks. Some people are finding themselves in a place where it just seems like their life is porous. You understand what I'm saying, Brother Augustine? Let's say your life is a bucket, right? But it just got a lot of holes in it. So no matter how much anointing, no matter how much oil is being poured into your life, but because your life is leaking, Mama, you can't hold all that God has given you. Make sense? And that's not God's will for the believer. So, so God would never allow, hear me, God would never allow a man of God or someone who's called to preach this gospel, to preach this gospel without going where he's called you to preach it. And as a Christian and as a believer, there are certain things that are required of us to live this life to the fullest in order for us to see the best that God has for us. Am I speaking to you? So today I want to talk to you and give you seven signs, seven signs that will show up in your life and tell you you need to fast urgently. Am I speaking to you? I've gotten calls from a couple of places and people are going through some things and, and and Brother Mo, they're believers now, but they just don't know how to move beyond this place. And sometimes when you see your life being very cyclical, that means where you, where you got out of last year in that particular area of your life, when you come into another year and find out around the same time last year you're in the same place, you're in a cycle. And the enemy got you. And if you do not know how to break that cycle, be it generational, be whatever it is, or you're not rock solid in the things of the spirit, huh? you find your life going around and around every year at the same time. And when God is trying to take you upward, you can't break through because you don't know what to do. Believe it or not, we struggle that in the church. So today, Pastor Sai, I want to talk to us about how do we, how do we identify these signs, and what are these signs that would drive us to go into an urgent fast? Going to talk about it. Amen? Are you with me? So, the life of the believer, I'm going to start talking, then I will go up to scriptures, and we will continue. The life of the believer, who's the believer? That is, the man and the woman who have professed Christ Jesus, right, as their Lord. Christ Jesus as your Savior, Christ Jesus as the master over your life, you are who I call a believer. You're saved by grace through faith. Hear me? You also have the presence and the person of the Holy Spirit guiding and leading you. You are a believer. Am I speaking to you? I'm speaking to you today, and those of you that are watching by live stream, this refers to you also. This person is called to a life of fasting. You cannot be a believer and walk this walk and only pray. You must also live a fasted life. Because what you, will get, what you start to see, you get fat on the things of God. And the enemy who sees that this other portion of your life, you're weak in this area, and he will begin to attack you in this area. And because you are spiritually blind in this area and you don't know how to work this, there are a lot of things he would throw at you to confirm and validate Matthews when Jesus turned to his disciples and said to them, this 
only comes out through fasting and praying. So a lot of people are in the church today dealing with some spiritual attack that can only be broken through fasting and praying. You hear me? So living the fasted life keeps you, number one, humble. People who are true fasters, people who are called to flow in this thing called ministry, people who God now has his hand on you, you will live a humble life. Fasting would teach you how to be humble. You see, because it's very easy for this to get to your head. Oh, you did well. Oh, you're a great preacher. Oh, you, you taught the word today. Before you know it, we go from one that's called to do the will of God to now one that's walking with the spirit of Lucifer. Which means now you go from a place of humility to now pride shows up. And what does the Bible say? Pride comes before the fall. So you start to go down and find yourself in situations and circumstances now because you are now prideful. You're stuck. Am I speaking to y'all? Somebody say amen. Okay, Pastor Sai came to teach today. I ain't come to preach. I'll get to the preaching. Or I just probably treach. Anybody know what treaching is? Teaching and preaching. Glory to God. I'm bilingual, y'all. Period. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm going to grow through this. Tell your neighbor, you're going to grow through this. What am I talking about? You're going to grow through this life, through this assignment. No matter what it is, the believer's journey will have valleys. You will be tested. You will be on trial. God, uh, yeah. God, God, for him to get you to where he's calling you to be, he will stretch you like a rubber band. Because you have capacity. And somebody might tell you, you can't. But the God I serve, if God created you, you have capacity. So living a fasted life will keep you humble, trusting God always. When you're a person that fasts, truly fasts, you stay in a place of humility. You look to God for every answer in every way. Sometimes you may not understand what you're going through. But because you have this desire to keep this thing called flesh under control or submit it, go into fasting. You go into fasting. One of my sisters, one time she was dating somebody and she, you know, she liked the guy, but there was just something there that just wasn't right. I told her, okay, put his name on the altar in your room and go to fasting. Seven, three days. We started off with three days. Let's go three days. No food, no drink. Pray about him. See if God does not. See if God does not intervene in this and show you who you're about to make this decision on. He did it. And where he thought he was hiding things, God begins to show it to her. Look, let me tell you something about this. This life, this fasted life, this life that Pastor Sai is about to share with you all today and the signs you need to pay attention to, what it can do for you. But let's look at this. Fasting according to the Bible... Is a spiritual weapon. The two, the two powerful cords for the believer is fasting and prayer. But when you add fasting, praying, and giving, you got a three-string cord. Very powerful. A, good, a person who understands this, these three things, that I pray, I go in, I seek his face, I superimpose upon heaven, and in my prayer life, I'm also fasting. In other words, I set aside time to spend time with him and, and be in a place where he speaks to me. You hear me? If God called you, he didn't call you to just... And God, here's the beautiful part about God. God. God calls you, but he won't force you to fast. You got to have a desire because this thing called flesh is what you've been brought out of. And as long as this thing called flesh, be it in the physical, in the spiritual, is going to continue to flow. It's going to continue to attack you. Your soul is what the enemy wants. And your soul is what God wants also. 
A rejuvenated soul, a saved soul, sanctified soul, is a soul that is submitted to the Spirit. Am I speaking to you? Somebody say amen. 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 So fasting, according to the Bible, is a spiritual weapon. Jesus told his disciples that the demonic spirit comes out not only, okay, comes out only but by fasting and praying. If this seems to be stubborn, you've been praying, oh. I pray, I pray. Pastor Sam, I'm always praying. You know, I, I'm talking to God, okay. But the boy is sitting in your life with his legs crossed, looking at you, laughing. He's not moving. You know why? Because you're missing one ingredient. Fasting. You have not, you have not called his world to respond to your world. Am I speaking to you? The believer's power and authority is to get that world to respond to our submit to in the name of Jesus. And that will require us to fast in a way that we've never done before in order to experience what it is that God has for us. Sometimes it's a test of your faith. You hear me? Fasting and praying is access, okay, or it accesses the supernatural, and it keeps us in alignment with the will of God. It is God's will for you to abound. It is God's will for you to give thanks in all things. It is the will of God for you to lack in no good thing. Beloved, above all things, I pray that you will prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prosper, your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions. For your soul to prosper, it has to submit to the Spirit. If you, if you follow the will of the Spirit of God, hear me, you will not fall prey to the lust of the flesh. And fasting is bringing that flesh under control. Amen? So how many of us are believing for God to break through for us? How many of us can actually write it down that I've been seeking God for this particular breakthrough and it seems like it has not come yet? You know why? You are forgetting this ingredient called fasting. We're going to talk about it. I'm going to show you some things. I'm going to show you places in the Bible where fasting was necessary. There are various types. But the foundation for fasting is found in Isaiah chapter 58. The true biblical foundation of fasting. You guys hear me? Go with me to Isaiah 58. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a supernatural. It gives you access to the supernatural in addition to your prayer life. Isaiah 58. And I'm going to read. Isaiah 58. So... Let me start at verse 1. I'm going to read down in, and I'll get to certain places and teach. Starting at verse 1, it says, cry out, spare not. Cry out loud, cry aloud, spare not. Lift up your voice with, like a trumpet and tell the people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. This is, this is the prophet Isaiah being instructed by God what he needs to do. Yet they seek me daily, hear me, and delight to know my ways as a nation that they that did righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of God. They want to know God's ways. They're seeking him. They're doing it what they call daily. Okay? And they're asking him. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching God. But listen to this, verse 3. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen? Why have we fasted, God, and you haven't shown up? Why? Why have we cried out to you and you haven't answered? Let me read it in the Amplified. We have fasted. Why have we fasted, they say, and you do not see it? Why have we humbled ourselves and you do not notice? Hear this, O Israel. On the day of your fast when you should be grieving for your sins, 
you find something you desire to do and you force your higher servants to work instead of stopping all work as the law teaches. First form of fasting you see here, huh? this is what God calls the wicked fast. This is what is called the wicked fast. And under that wicked fast, there are ways people fast that is not pleasing to God. You're not doing it because you have a heart desire for the things of God. You're doing it to show off. You're, you're, you're doing it, you come in here, you got oil on your face, you got sackcloth on so everybody can know you're fasting. You're acting like you're dying. How you doing today, Brother G? Oh, I'm fasting. You know, God is talking to me. Really? Really? You're fasting. You're not submitting to the will of the Spirit. Your mindset is you're rude to people. You're disregarding to people. You're treating people bad. Yet and still you're fasting. God is not moved by that. Let's keep reading. Keep it in the Amplified. Keep it in the Amplified. Okay? Let me keep reading. And it says here, why have you done all these? Why have you afflicted our souls and you take no notice? They're talking to God. In fact, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and you exploit, okay, all your laborers. Verse 4. Indeed, you fast for strife and debate. You fast for strife and debate. And strifing, I mean, fasting is supposed not to bring strife. True fasting, true biblical fasting, is not designed to bring strife. It's designed to bring breakthrough, deliverance, healing. Am I speaking to you? So if you're fasting and you're not fasting the right way, you're creating strife in your life. You're creating now where now you want to debate with God why God didn't show up. Because you chose your fast, God didn't choose the fast, so explain to him why he got to respond to your fast. You see, God will know your heart in the fasting. He will know your intention in the fasting. Some people get up and they say, oh, I'm going to fast today. Okay? Did you seek God's face? Do you have an agreement that every week on Wednesday at this time, you find time set aside to meet with your God? To help purge yourself, your spirit man. Build your spirit man in the process of the fasting. Is there something you have identified in your life that is causing you not to move in the way God wants to? Are you hearing me? Okay, let's keep, let, what does it say in the Amplified again? It says here, the facts are that you fast only for what? Strife and brawling and to strike with what? The fist of what? Wickedness. You do not fast as you do today to make your voice heard on high. You think because you fast one day and you think that's it? You think because you you went into your little sanctimonious holy space. And oh, today, God, I'm, I'm going to God is not a magician. He's your father. It's, it's, it's like it's a like, uh, little woman back there trying to play a game on her parents and think that the parents are just going to fall for her, her crying and her whining, and her whining. I mean, we all have done this. We got kids. We know how they come sometimes. But that doesn't move anything with God. As children of God, especially mature saints, you should know that this is not God's will for your life. He said you strike with wickedness. That's what you call wicked fasting. You guys understand where I'm going with this? Somebody shout hallelujah. So, so they fast with that, right? Verse 5 says, listen, is it a fast that I, this is God talking, is it a fast that I have chosen? Did we have the conversation about it? 
Are you spending time with me in prayer to where I can reveal to you where, where's the area you need to fast? Now, why am I reading this to y'all? I'm preaching to me also. Because, you know, sometimes you can get caught up going about the day and you're thinking in your own strength and ability. And now that you're praying, you know God has heard your prayer and God is answering prayer. But here is this one thing in front of you that is stubborn. It can't move. Have you spoken to God about it? Has God said, yes, go? David inquired of God before he went after the Philistine. And every time David inquired of God before he went after the Philistine, he won the battle because he waited for God to respond. If you're going to see the elevation of God working in flesh, it won't happen. Mm. Not your ability to go. He said, is this, is this, listen, is it a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is, is this the fast that I've chosen? Your soul, the soul, the will, the mind, the emotions, the seat of your intellect, those areas that, that will keep you up all night. Some people want to fast because they feel their mind is out of order. Some people want to fast because they're going through some emotional trauma. But is it what God has chosen? Have you afflicted that? Is this what God's showing? And he says here, is it to bow down his head like a bulrush and to spread out sackcloth and, and ashes? Would you call this a fast? And an acceptable day of the Lord? Some people see it and they go imitate somebody else. They don't even understand why it is the person is doing it. So the two forms, the first form here is wickedness. We're looking at it. How it is you're fasting and you're not fasting within the proper context of the Bible. So a wicked fast, listen to me. A wicked fast... It's not pleasing to God. It's not out, listen, it's not out of a sincere desire to seek God's guidance and direction. You're doing it because you came to church, Pastor Sai says something, and you go home, you think he says, no, I don't want you to do that. I want you to do these things, praise, pray, fast. Doing it with an understanding as how it's supposed to be properly done so you can get the right results in your life. This is why the word of God is given to us. If you're properly fasting, God will open the eyes, your spiritual eyes, and show you things you did not know. So the first one we see here is, is what they call the wicked fast. Verse 6 says, is this not the fast that I have chosen? Now we're going into what we call the second phase of the two forms of fasting. And it is in this place that all other fasting fall. It's called the purifying fast. And a purifying fast, let me, let me give it to you right now. The purifying fast is fasting that is acceptable to God. It cleanses, it heals, it brings direction, it breaks chains of bondage, it destroys yokes, it shows the spirit and the heart of God. Now let's look at what it says in scripture. Is this not the fast that I've chosen? Verse 6 starts off by saying, to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke. Is it not to share your bread with hungry people? When you truly fast, you fast in alignment with the desire of God. Now, the purifying fasting, all other fastings fall underneath it. Because it pleases God when you do it. It gives you power when you do it. People who fast with an understanding as to why they fast and pray. Hear me? Breakthrough is inevitable. Breakthrough is inevitable. Oh, family, I got somebody say hallelujah. I need you to respond like a Baptist church in Texas. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. All right. Somebody shout hallelujah. 
All other fasting falls underneath it. Now let's talk about it. Okay, for example, for example, purified fasting, listen, have these various forms. Number one, you can, for example, there's something called the one-day fast. You find that in the book of Judges. Judges chapter 20, verse 26, one-day fast. Okay, this one-day fast you do for direction. Like Father God, you're living the fasted life, right? But this particular day, you decide to go in a little bit deeper. Pastor Zach, you go in a little bit deeper because you need direction and an answer to a question. One day. Judges chapter 20, verse 26. Let's see what it says real quick. Judges 20, 26. Judges 20, 26. What does it say? It says here, then all the sons of Israel and all the people went up and came to Bethel, the house of God, and they wept. And they sat there before the Lord and what? Fasted that day until evening and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. You do it to bring about a one day response and direction. Number two, the second kind of fast that falls under the purifying fast is the three day fast. And that three-day fast is what we call the Esther fast. Some of you have tried it before. For three days, no water, no food. Uh -uh. Africans, we call it dry fast. Yeah. Man, it works, doesn't it, Augustine? It really works. If you're doing it the right way, if you're doing it that where God's heart is in alignment with it, if you're doing it where you sought God's face, to give you direction in it. You just didn't wake up, oh, I'm going to do a three-day fast. You just do that. You just, you're on a diet, a brief little water diet, I guess. You lose the, you lose the five pounds or the 10 pounds. And then, you know, the funny part about it, because you don't know how to fast correctly, you know, when you're coming out of the fast, you're supposed to come slowly. But we Africans, boy, as soon as, soon as we hit that time, I beg, you got something to swallow? Uh, like room boy would say, you don't got no fufu today, fufu and soup. But we come out like that, but really, when you're coming out of a real fast like that, it's water and fruit to get the body properly back into alignment. Three days. Because when you really do it, you're supposed to do it lock away. No water, no food, and all you're doing is subjecting that flesh, both physical and spirit, to God's will. Okay? That's a purifying fast. That's another example. The other example is what we call the seven-day fast. And the seven-day fast is found in um, 1 Samuel 31, verse 13. 1 Samuel 31, verse 13. Let's look at it so we can see. If you also look in the, in the three-day fast, Esther did it, and then Paul did it. After Paul was converted from Saul to Paul, he went into a three-day fast. Acts 9, 9. Okay? So it tells you it is God's will for us to fast. So, 1 Samuel 31 and 13 says, They took their bones and buried them under the, the what? The tamarix tree at Jabez and did what? And fasted as a sign of mourning and respect for seven days. I'm giving you an example of what fasting looks like. So sometimes you can fast. Some people will fast for seven days in their state of mourning. In other words, God help me with my grief. Because grieving, grieving is critical. One of these days I'll take my time and break down how people grieve, the different ways of grieving. Like you've been married to somebody for a long time and your, and your spouse is sick. That, that spouse is leaving. You automatically go into a state of mind to where I'm losing one, has been with me for so long. Your spirit starts grieving. Because you're losing something, someone God has blessed you with. It doesn't have to happen on the day of the person's passing. It, hap it starts happening as they are diminishing. 
You guys understand what I'm saying? Huh? Yeah? People go through divorce. It's the grieving state in that divorce, believe it or not. I don't care how mad she made you. I don't care how mad he made you. There was once upon a time a union where two became one. And then when you go, it's a tearing away. And it's always painful. To break out of that sometimes, you got to go through a fast. Seek God's face on it so he can cleanse you from that kind of pain. Somebody shout hallelujah. Glory to God. The, 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 the other way is called the 10-day fast. And this was done in Daniel chapter 1 and 12. Why did Daniel do this? Scripture says he did it for favor, for strength, and also for discernment and wisdom. Daniel's 1 and 12. Let's look at it. Daniel chapter 1 and 12. Are you with me? Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. To God be the glory. Today is your breakthrough day. Amen? Daniel's 1 and 12 says, and this now he was talking to the, to the chief, I think, cook or the person who was supposed to watch over them. And the guy was concerned that, look, y'all, y'all need to eat some of this food or else the king is going to kill me. Where y'all would look like y'all starving and everybody else look like they're getting fat on some good food. Am I speaking to you? Daniel turns to him and says to him, please test your servants for what? For 10 days and let us be given some vegetables to eat and to drink water. You'd be surprised what just eating vegetables and drinking water can do for your body's health alignment. Put some meat aside. Don't touch it. Vegetables, water. You get cleansed. You will heal faster. But what does the text say? Continue the next one. Next verse, verse 13. It says, then let our appearance and the appearance of the young men who eat the king's finest food be observed and compared by you and deal with your servants in accordance with what you see. Next verse. So the man listened to them and in this manner and he tested them. Daniel later on, when they came out of this, Daniel was favored. Daniel got promoted. When you fast, when you truly fast according to the Bible, on the other side of your fasting is a breakthrough. You're coming out of something to go into something that God has ordained for you. Am I speaking to your family? When I remember when we were trying to grow the, the church in California, the pa- <laughs> The, pastors, the pastor put us on a fast during the time we're supposed to be eating. I'm thinking about doing that to us come Thanksgiving. Hallelujah. The whole church fighting me right now. Are you serious, Pastor? He put us on a fast during Thanksgiving. So, so Pastor, what are you saying? We, we, can't, we can't eat? He said, no, no. Pick a time. You want us to fast while well, mom's in the kitchen cooking. You want me to smell that and do what? Go outside? It's Thanksgiving. And that's the time they cook their favorite food, right, Eunice? Yeah. But Daniel got favor. Now, that's the first place now. Most of the people remember Daniel's fasting and Daniel waiting in the further, in later on in scripture, but they don't remember this. He did it for 10 days. This is another kind of fasting. I'm just listing a few of them. Then there's the 14 day fast, okay, which is in Acts 27, 33 to 34, when Paul and the men were on the ship. You'll remember when the ship was going through and he, he put them on a fast? Because he did that, when the ship was wrecked, guys, they all lived. When you do it the right way, there is evidence in the manifestation of it. The next one we see is the 21-day fast, which is the Daniel fast. Daniel chapter 10, verse 3. Okay? And he did that for 21 days. But what did Daniel do? Daniel just didn't fast 
Ezekiel, he was fasting and praying persistently because that 21 day fast and prayer the prayer was answered but satan attacked the answer so he had to persist in it for him to see what god had promised fasting all right are you are you with me still then we got the 40 day fast there are three times I found in the Bible where the 40-day fast was necessary. And the three times the people who did the 40-day fast flow were people that God himself had his divine hand on. 40 days of fasting, according to the Bible, God must approve. Or else you throw your body out of alignment. Moses did it, 40 days. Elijah did it. I, when I read the Elijah portion, Elijah, you know what Elijah did? He, he, fat, he basically fed himself and then went into 40 days of fasting. And what he ate sustained him. No food, no water. Then the third place is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. To do that, God's hand is on your life for a particular assignment. And each one of these men had a great assignment to fulfill. Moses had to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. Elijah had to contend with the, with the prophets of Baal and deal with Jezebel. Are you hearing me? Jesus now had to come to do what? To save the world. So sometimes you hear me, I fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Yet and still I don't see the significance of you fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. Because the people you're talking to, if God's hand is not on their life, they won't even be able to handle 10 days. Am I speaking to you? So now, Let's talk, about, let's talk about this. Fasting must be done with purpose and faith. And when we do it, it's for protection in times of trouble. We see it in the book of Ezra. When we do it, it's for repentance. We see it in the book of Nehemiah, Joel, chapter 2, third, I mean 12 and, and 13, and, the first, and 1 Samuel 7, 3 and 6. When we do it for purpose and with faith, for God's direction is the main reason why we ought to be fasting. Help us, Father. Show me, Father. Guide me through this. I don't understand. But if this persists, I, I got to figure out a way to get to you. It has a purpose. And it must be done by faith. If you're fasting and you got no faith to believe that when you come out of the fasting, God has answered your prayers, family, you fasted for none. Pray well. Just made yourself hungry. Am I speaking to you? Okay, now, when you do it this way, then it is also for breaking strongholds. Jesus told his disciples that. He told them that. Verse 6 says, it is to loose, Isaiah 58, it is to loose the chains of bondage. It's to set you free from something that's holding you back. So let me address the things now that I think are holding us back. Can you hold this, brother? Let me, let's talk about the signs we need to pay attention to and why it is we need to fast urgently. And I'm saying urgently because sometimes we don't fast with an urgency. Sometimes we're going through something and we don't, we don't, we don't go after God with an urgency. He says, let us not be anxious for anything. Don't be anxious for anything. But in prayer... Supplication. Supplication speaks to an urgency in prayer. And thanksgiving, we make our requests known unto God. Yeah? And that his peace that surpasses all understanding will do what? Will come upon our minds and our heart. Why? Because that's our soul. So, 
We got to do it with urgency. There has to be an immediate response. We're going in for this. So we're going to go after this from this day forward. We're going to start learning how to identify things and go after it in fasting. To be a believer walking with God, you must know that you are called to fast or live a fasted life. We pick days in the week to fast. Set times in the week to fast. And then when we see those stubborn areas where nothing is happening for us, my wife and I, we go a little bit deeper. Now, I'm a big boy. I like to eat. I ain't going to lie to y'all. Sometimes I'll be talking to guys, is this the only way to do this? <laughs> Mama Taffy, I remember for the Daniel fast, I remember I drank water for 21 days. My skin was so clear. My hair looked good. Oh, yeah. Lady, Lady Wynn was looking. I passed by her. She'd be like, hmm. But that 21 days, what came in the fasting was an elevation in the work and the call of ministry. So where I was in youth ministry, my pastor calls me and he said, come on up. I now need you to be chief of ministry operations. So now I had to put other people who I trained. Now, mind you, I'm training them. And I'm, I'm just training them to be leaders. But when he made that call, I had already had people in place to step in for me. And that fasting also released the grace upon my life that when he put me there, I excelled. Are you hearing me? Five years in the position, 21 days of, 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 of doing it with God changed everything. Please hear me. Your God has a plan and a purpose for your life. His whole thing is to see you go from glory to glory, from faith to faith, from one level to the next level. God has already healed you according to his word. Now, if you believe what he did for you then, that is already set and is finished for you to walk in now, and then you begin to fast in it, you will see God move on your behalf. Can I get an amen? Somebody shout hallelujah. Okay, so these are the signs. Number one, that you go into an urgent fast. Number one, when you are experiencing unusual delays in your life, you go into fasting. Unusual. All of a sudden now, what you know would work, all of a sudden there's delay. Where you know the prophet may have said, put this into place, right? Do this. He's giving you some instructions, but as you're, there's, there's this delay. Daniel, if you listen to me, when you look at the book of Daniel, the delay was the promise. God has already answered your prayers. God has already released that which he promised to get to you. But how many of you know now, this is spiritual. And fasting is a spiritual weapon. So when the things are not showing up as God promised, that means there's some, there's some chaos going on in the spiritual realm. And it's going to take you having to access it spiritually to break it. And that fasting, listen, that fasting will then get all of heaven to release warring angels on your behalf to contend with the enemy to bring to you what God has promised you. Your fasting has that kind of right. So when you find your life in delay, go into a fast. Choose any one of these fasts and go into it except the 40 days now. Choose it and go before God. Seek his face on the fast. Lord, you see what I'm dealing with. Ma, it's not that God don't know what you're going through, but God wants to know that you can trust him with what you're going through. So you speak to God about what it is you're going through. He's your father. He made you. He knows your end from your beginning. He already knows. But tell him. It's like, it's like I know what my son needs. But my son comes to me and tells me what he needs. What that does? Partnership. We're now in agreement. When you come in agreement with God, first of all, who will stop you after God said, let's go? Who, who will prevent you from having what is yours when God said, I'm with you? 
Walk before me. Do this with Move in this direction. I got your back. So when you're going through and you see delays in your life, you also have to confront it in fasting. If you do not deal with your delays, hear me, your destiny will inevitably be denied. Delays are designed to stop you from seeing God's future manifest in your life. The enemy will create delays. How does he? Distraction. Will come about and do something in the relationship that will cause you pain and throw you off your game. Delays. Listen to me. God has called you. You're doing the work, but it seems as if to say nothing is happening. Am I speaking to you? Prophet preached today about Zachariah and his wife Elizabeth. The length of time it took for them to have a kid. They were righteous according to scripture. Yes, you can be a child of God and still experience delay. You can be a child of God and still have some challenges in your life. Don't let nobody try to make you feel bad. If you're going through challenges and you're a kid, you know, somebody who believes in God, come on now. The assignment on the believer's life will, it has a little bit of potholes, valleys, and and, and dungeons and attacks. Some of us, somebody asked me, you know, sometimes Pastor Sal, when you preach, you preach like it's, you know, delays and, and challenges, and I say, yeah, we go through it. She said, but I'm not having it. I laughed. I said, you ain't got no problems? You ain't nobody? No. Nah. Okay, cool. And I guess you and the devil sitting at the same table. Augustine, when that enemy came after your money, huh? That's a sign God has something better for you. When the enemy is attacking you at a very high level, start thanking God for the breakthrough that's coming. Oh, family, y'all got to hear me. If your life life has challenges and you're going through, every one of you in this room, if I say, have you ever endured any form of challenge since you gave your life to the Lord? I get you, every hand will go up in here. You know why? Because it's designed for you so that God can bring you out of and bring you through it so that he gets the glory. Big challenges to me now, I'm understanding that God is up to something big in my life. You see, because... The, 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 a big challenge will cause you to go deeper in him. That's foundation. For you to build a skyscraper, Audrey, the, the height of the skyscraper, huh? the depth of the foundation has to be two times deep as the, length, as the height of the skyscraper. So God, if you're about to take me here, that means I got to go deeper in you. And when I go deeper in you and when it's my turn to show up, it's going to be explosive. Somebody shout hallelujah. So when you see delays, that's when you go into fasting. Number one. Right? If you don't address your delays, destiny will inevitably be denied. You have to. You can't change nothing you're not willing to confront. And change is not changed until it's changed. Not partially. Changed. Am I speaking to you? Number two, you go into a fast when you start struggling to pray. It's a big one. When every time you try to figure out you want to you go into pray, where well, you could pray for one hour. Now you can't even pray for five minutes. Time to go into a fast. Because what the enemy has done now has distracted you from a place where you have communion with God. And every failure in life is first a prayer failure. If you fail in prayer, failure comes finding you. It's all, it's everywhere in your life. You, 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 I've seen pastors who, who get discouraged in the journey. And they stop praying like they used to. And when they stop praying like they used to, Zach, the problem gets worse. And their depression goes higher. 
And the more they stay away from prayer, not praying the way they should, the deeper the problem. And before you know it, they throw their hands up in the air and they quit on what God has called them to do. Somebody shout, that would not be my portion. Oh, that would not be our portion. You see, when you, when you mix fasting and praying together to break the hold pattern of prayer against your life, and stopping you from praying more, seeking God's face more, as you go into the fasting, you bring your spirit man, and you bring this mind to subjection to the will of God. You do it reading the word of God while you're praying the word of God. When you pray the word of God while you're fasting, the word of God starts to speak. And when the word of God speaks, what does it do? It builds up your most holy faith. It comes alive in you. Am I speaking to you? So when you see a lot of delays, fast. When you find yourself struggling to pray, go into a fast right away. Set a time aside. Go hang out with him. Talk to your God. Superimpose upon heaven. Recognize who God is. Know that he has a plan for your life. And this thing, this thing is a temporary state. This too shall pass. Am I speaking to you? This too shall pass. And then you got to confront the thing. Devil, you're a liar. You're not going to separate me from the love of my God. You're not going to stop me from loving God. You're not going to stop me from communicating with my God. If I don't talk to him, I got asthma. I can't breathe if I don't spend time with God. How do I face a day if I don't talk to him? And I'm not saying go start some mediocre prayer. Everybody can get in the car and say a quick prayer. No, I'm talking about one of those cry out prayers. Cry out to me and I will hear you and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things you did not know. That's what I'm talking about. Couple that with fasting. Lord, I need you. I can't do this without you. Yes, I know I thought I could. Please forgive me. I submit my all to you. Purge me. Cleanse me. Do something. Refine, refine the fire in me. That's what fasting will do. Number three. Number three. You go into a state of urgency when it comes to fasting when your flesh lords over your spirit. When everything you do is driven by your flesh. You stop hearing the voice of the Spirit of God. He says, if you, be, if you be led by the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. But let me tell you something. The flesh is not supposed to rule the Spirit. Am I speaking to you? The flesh is su supposed to succumb it's supposed to be subjected to the spirit. When you bring your flesh on the order, baby girl, fine Negro can't come up to you and start whispering game to you and you will fall for it. Your flesh will be screaming. Ay! But the spirit will say, shut up, sit down. That's not it. And you will hear it. Uh, am I speaking to y'all? Those of you watching by line, you understand I'm bilingual. I can say baby girl. Mm -hmm. Some of us don't want to be alone. We feel it sometimes, especially when you've been married before. Guys, you hear me? And you go through this divorce thing and it just tears you. Now you're healing, right? And then this perfect person looks like she comes out of nowhere. Lord Jesus, she got on a red dress. And then you start to hear that old song, Lady in Red. I mean, it's just playing in your head. And, and you start to envision yourself walking down the park and, you know, and all that. And you, yeah. you just start fantasizing. Right, Pastor Zach? Oh, Lord. Yeah, she's fine. Oh, Lord Jesus. Yes. You, you go in the corner when she say, hey. You I'm telling the truth. We know. Women won't confess it. Men will. I know I will. Lord Jesus, help me. That was my kryptonite before I married Lady Wynn. Beautiful women. And y'all don't even try nothing. 
But that, that's the place. Yeah. A lot of them come. Can I be real? Am I tough? Am I allowed? Amen. Can I be real? We know sometimes that when the enemy attacks the woman, sometimes, and they feel alone, feel like God has forgotten them, sometimes they come to the church. They will act like they're holier and saved. But the fact of the matter is, Brother Swagoo walks by, he's smelling good. He got sweet words in his mouth when he, he got a sweet tongue. Yeah. He too is there to see who he can catch. He's coming fishing. He's casting nets. But let me tell y'all something. A person who truly lives a fasted life would never be drawn in by that. Would never be drawn in by that. That woman will be about her business building her own life with the Lord. And, and, and here is how it's going to work. God is going to open the man's eyes to see you. Like Boaz saw Ruth. It says when a man finds a wife, not when the wife finds the man. When the man finds her. In other words, you should be looking when you know you got your house in order. Don't go get married to somebody's daughter. You, you, you don't even know how to pay bills. Yeah. James Brown had a song a long time ago he called Static. Don't start none, won't be none. Don't go get married to somebody just for good looks. Because eventually that good look is going to fade. And where I come from, we ask the question, you're fine with me? I ain't marrying you just for your fine. Just like me, you know, you might meet me with a six-pack, but I might hit my 50s or so. And everything that was stiff is just, you know, just coming down, going this way. I'm gaining more real estate. I'm losing my hair. Gashabat.com. Getting gray, and I'm going to buy, uh, 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 what do you call it? Just for men. Help me, Lord. Am I speaking to you? Shout hallelujah. But, 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 but you fast. Listen to me. You fast when you find yourself that your flesh now has rule over your spirit. Every decision you make, you make it from the flesh. You make it with this thing thinking that I, because I know what I can do it. No. See God's face. Talk to God about it. You, you might go. And, and here's the other thing. Somebody can come and bring a great offer to you. It sounds good. But if you never go see God in the matter and you sign up for it, the enemy just played a marketing trick on you. And Lucifer is good at that. Lucifer will make you think you're going to a beach party and when you arrive is the lake of fire. Am I speaking to you? There, there are people who are in the church that are possessed. They're not fully saved. We've seen brothers go chasing, get married, save brother, Caesar, hey, look everything. As soon as he got married, Jezebel showed up. Vice versa. You have to inquire of God what it is you need to do. If you see your life where you start to make decisions strictly by flesh, you're not praying about it, you're not seeking God's face, it's not reflective in the word of God or your answers are not coming, there's no confirmation, there's no prophetic release, let me tell you something, it's time for you to fast. Because if you're being led by the flesh, you will fall for sin every time. And the deeper you go, Speaking to you? Somebody say amen. amen. Come on, y'all don't get quiet on me now. We're almost done. Number four, 
The next time you are supposed to fast with an urgency is when you are having dreams that indicate witchcraft activities. If you start to see in your dreams dogs chasing you, dogs biting you, people fighting you that you don't know, hear me now, when you also start to see in your dream you're caught up with the incubus spirit or the succubus spirit, which simply means as a man, there's a female that comes to sleep with you in your dream. Emma, kashadabasa. When you start to see things like this, when you start to see things like this, you need to go into a fast. When you see people that love you all of a sudden in the dream trying to kill you, you need to go into a fast. God is trying to tell you sometimes that there are certain things in your life that you have created that is now creating access to certain things you got no business dealing with. Who are some of your friends? Who are the people you've been walking with sometimes that God told you it's time for you to cut away from? So when you start to see dreams or in your dreams, wish crack activities, like you, like for example, you graduated from the high school many years ago, but you find yourself back at the same high school and you're not graduating at all. You're still stuck in, the, in that place. Somebody's trying to lock you somewhere. You got a business. The business idea is profound. It's awesome. But in the dream, you keep seeing people burning the contract. That's satanic. And the enemy is doing it to cause you to quit. And not trust that God got an answer for you. That's when you go fasting. Number five. Are you with me? Shout amen. When you feel like your life is going through a dry valley, no fruit, you're working, you're tithing, you're coming to church, but no fruit. You need to go into a fast, like yesterday. You need to start to seek God. Like yesterday. Am I speaking to you? Somebody shout amen. amen. Number six. When you are dealing with what we call nomophobia. Anybody heard of nomophobia? You know what nomophobia is? Now some people are going to get mad at me. Because we all do this sometimes. But there's a difference between doing it every now and then. And just being straight out addicted to it. Nobophobia is when you're addicted to your phone. When you wake up in the morning, the first thing you reach for is your phone. If that is your life every day, oh, you need to go into a fast. You reach for the phone before you reach for the Bible. You reach for the phone to see who's on Facebook, who got a response for you and all this kind of stuff. If your girl Shanae and them are coming or what the new fashion is, Pookie and them, what they doing, the latest dance, the new TikTok. Uh-huh. Phone. If all you listen to, all, everywhere you go, you got your phone. You spend more time on your phone than you spend time talking to the God who made you. You got stuff you need to do, but instead of talking to God about that and where you need to go, you're spending time on the phone looking for what your next fashion might look like. You can't even put the phone down for 50 minutes. Nomophobia means that you have a fear of losing your phone. Not a fear of God, though. A fear of losing the phone. Just now, somebody run out of here, we say fire, and somebody leave their phone here. I guarantee you the fire is going on. The person stand out there and wait till the fire truck comes. As soon as the truck comes and starts spraying, they're going to run in here and look for their phone. Like, like your baby is in the, the thing. Nomophobia. When you find yourself always reaching for your cell phone before your Bible, before you even pray, and then when you're at work, when you're supposed to be working because they're supposed to be paying you, you're stealing time on your cell phone. Scrolling. 
Oh, did you see what Pastor Sidon done? Didn't it did? Am I in your Kool-Aid today? I'm Mr. Rogers. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm coming in your neighborhood. It's going to be a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Turn to your neighbor and say, would you be mine? Or won't you be my neighbor? Dennis, you hear me? The most powerful thing you can do in life is to set aside time for your God and put nothing else above that. And that may require you to put your phone down for 30 minutes, for an hour. Talk to you, God. Sometimes, sometimes the idea you will need, God will say to you while you're driving to work, pick up your phone. Sometimes God will answer that prayer by telling somebody to call you. But if you don't seek his face and you put the phone over him, over walking this life with him, then I guess the phone got the answer. Am I speaking to you? <laughs> they, they fight with me, prophet. They fight with me. They fight with me, Lord Jesus. And again, like I said, I'm preaching to myself. I know times when I wake up and I pick up my phone. And it's not to cut the alarm off. You know, sometimes the alarm come on and you pick it up. But then when you pick up the alarm, you get distracted. You see a message from Jojo or Kofi or one of them that you didn't answer to. Then all of a sudden you're going at when you're supposed to be praying. Now you're spending one hour or so. And then when you look up, you see, look at the time. Oh, shoot, I got to get ready for work. And you ain't take time to pray. Then you jump in the car. Oh, God, thank you for this day. Oh, Lord, take me through to where I'm going. Then you plug your cell phone in, right? Then you got to hear uh, uh, um, prayer warrior, just, I mean, God there, and he's just screaming in the car. That's not you praying to God. That's somebody else praying. Open your mouth and talk to your father. Yeah, because he's the hottest prayer warrior now. Oh, I got to listen to this. Man, please. You pray, you get your breakthrough. In these last prophetic days, God said that you will have the ability to prophesy. But if you live a fasted life, it'll be easily accessible to you. If you live a fasted life, even when you look at stuff like this, God will give you the ability to discern what that is. This is the house where we teach the Word of God. Our worship experience is birthed out of the depth of our knowledge of who our God is. You see, when you know who God is, you know how to worship. When you understand your God, you know how to talk to Him. Last but not least, let me, let me finish. This, this cell phone one I said to myself, I said, man, God, if I talk to these people about this next week, they're they not going to come. They won't like it. Pastor Sai trying to intervene in my cell phone life. You there chasing a whole bunch of people to like you that don't even care about you. And your brothers that are sitting right here next to you, you can't even talk to them. Because somebody gave you a thumbs up. You think you've arrived. Because they send you multiple hearts. Oh, you think you're there now. And they send you one of these emojis that winks at you. So you, you're cute now, huh? Eddie, keep looking straight. I'm talking about you too. We're almost done. Last one. You need to go into an urgency fast when you are trusting God for divine intervention. Now this one is what we all are called to do. On a regular basis because the enemy is looking to see if he can sift you as wheat Satan is not happy that you're saved so he's gonna create roadblocks he's gonna create hindering blocks he's gonna create obstacles he's gonna come after your mind Christine your mind 
And it is where he starts to throw questions at you. Because the minute you don't know the word of God, if he asks a question, you can't answer the question, he's coming after you. So when you start to see your life and you're trusting God for breakthroughs, for divine intervention, because the enemy wants to take you out, you go into a fast. I normally do the Esther fast. Three days straight. Why? Because it's written in Bible. When Esther called all of them together and they went into this fast, God answered them. And salvation came to them. Am I speaking to you? Tonight is the night when you understand these things. That your life will begin to change. Increase your fasting with your prayer. For by this, this is the way these things now will come out. Fasting will help you to see your enemy. Fasting will open the eyes of your understanding and show you what God intends for you to have. Fasting. After this holiday break, we're going into a fast. This house. You know why? Because the Lord said we're not going into 2024. The manner in which we're closing out 2024. He wants to elevate us. He wants to give us more. He wants to show us more. He wants to bring more to us. There are business people in this house that have not yet broken through because the enemy is messing with us. People don't like this church. I'm going to tell you that right now. There are folks praying against us. In my time of praying and fasting, God just started reveal, revealing things. But you know the beautiful thing about who I am with my God? Like David in Psalms 35, right? And 13. Let's go there. Psalms 35 and 13. Psalms 35 and 13. I, I, I got this David thing about me. I like a good fight, but I love my God. I love to praise him. I love to worship him. I want him to know how much I appreciate him. He listen to the word of God. But as for me... When they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth, mourning garments. I humbled my soul with fasting, and I prayed with my head bowed. I behave as if grieving for my friend or my brother. I bowed down in mourning. Hear me, as one who sorrows for his mother. Keep going. But in my stumbling, they rejoice. Your enemy wants you to stumble. But when you're living a fasted life, no weapon formed against you will prosper. Every tongue that rises against you in judgment shall be condemned. Hear me. When you live a fasted life, I don't care how the enemy comes. God got you. Because he will honor that. And I'm not saying we walk around here with dust on our heads. We come in here with torn clothes. And then, you know, some people can look at us and say, what's wrong with you? No, 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 no. Wash your face. Go into your quiet place. Talk to your God. Put, cast your cares in front of him. And let him know that you can't do it without him. I submit my body. I submit my mind. I, su I submit this thing you've given me to you, Lord. Now you take hold. Now you carry it. Now you lead me. Sometimes you might have to, you might have to do away with some friends. Fast them for a week. Fast just how you fast social media. You know? And I'm speaking to you, it doesn't really have to always be food. What are you addicted to? What got your attention? What's keeping you? What's holding you? Can you break away from it? Sometimes you got to ask yourself the question, is it even beneficial? You guys got this? Come on, say amen. amen. Say, I receive it. Lift your hands where you are. Father God, these are your children. I pray that they have received your word today and your instruction. 
as they seek your face to fast according to your will, according to your purified fasting, not as a wicked fast. May you answer their prayers. May you increase their lives. You see, fasting increases your prayer walk. It increases your spiritual walk with God. Fasting brings wisdom to you. I pray that you will begin to live a fasted life today. That you will begin to seek God's face for the best He has for you. If that particular spirit is stubborn, if that particular issue is stubborn, I pray over you today with your hands lifted up that God will break it off for you. You will not falter in your fasting. You will not be denied the best God has for you in your fasting. You will be honored wherever you are in your fasting. I pray this over your life today. That from this day forward you will increase in your walk with him, in your prayer with him, in your fasting. And as you increase there, may God begin to open doors for you like never before. It is in Jesus' master's name we pray. Come on, shout amen. Put your hands together. God is good.